The next thing we want to do is click the search button. So using Firebug, click on the button. We can see the HTML. So as before, let's copy the HTML and paste it in here. We can get rid of the source here. We won't really be needing that. So as before, we'll use the driver.findElement and this time we'll use the CSS selector. We have a type input dot and the class name here. We'll copy that from here and paste it in. Then we just want to click this button. So once that's clicked, if we come back to the website here and type in Apple and then click the search button, the page reloads with the search results displayed. We can see the title of the page at the top here. We can use this text as confirmation that we are on the correct page after conducting the search or we could just as easily have checked for some other text on the page. We can use the WebDriver wait class in here to wait for the title to become visible before moving on. Right click on this and resolve it. This is expecting the driver instance and a time span to determine how long to wait before a test times out. We'll use seconds here and enter 10. OK, so with that in place, we now need to define what we're waiting for. So we wait until this condition becomes true, which is the title of the page to lower starts with search results for. Let's come up here and copy this here and paste it in here. So we're searching for the text Apple. And let's run this test. That went through very quickly, but we haven't hit an error, so that's good. And it also shows that the WebDriver way is working correctly. I'm going to change the title text here so that the test fails. Let's run this test again. We're on the results page. Let's come in here and have a look at the test results. We'll find the test has failed. And there you go, we've hit a timeout exception because the title of the page does not match. So we've seen the WebDriver wait class in action here and how we can use it to check for certain conditions before we continue our test. This class is very handy when dealing with Ajax pages as we'll demonstrate later in the course.